Hey, Pastor Gary here for another Wednesday Word. I pray that this finds you doing well. I want to thank you for just uh, joining me this Wednesday and just allowing me to share my heart with you. Uh, this week I'm coming coming to you from our Juana's TNT Girls Room. Um, last time we were together for uh, for our uh, Wednesday devotional, uh, I did it on 2 Timothy 2.15 where it talks about approved workmen are not ashamed, and that's really what Awanas is. Uh, and, and so I want to just really showcase everything that our kids are doing with scripture memorization and and getting uh, just being here and being diligent on, on getting their scriptures done, going through the books, and, and just uh, storing up God's word in their heart. And I want to thank the uh, leaders as well. Uh, John Smith is our commander, Awana's commander. Of course, Karen Jones, Lisa Knapp, Marina LaPlante. Uh, and, and if I'm forgetting somebody, it's not on purpose. Uh, but I uh, just want to thank them. It is a small group of leaders, and, and they have anywhere anywhere between 18, 22, 23 kids. And so, uh, you know, that's something that they just do when, uh, every Sunday night. And, and so just thank you uh, for just... Um, just being the hands and feet and, and just uh, teaching our kids, you know, scripture memorization and, and just preparing our kids to to defend the faith, to defend their faith uh, and introducing them to Christ. You know, we've had kids get saved in Awanas and, and it's because of, of the Awana workers and the volunteers that just put their time in and, and, and love on our kids. So just thank you for doing that. Uh, <clears throat> but this is what one of the rooms looks like. This is uh, one of the, the nicer rooms or our girls' rooms, of course. The boys, I don't think they take much uh, stock into decorating, but our, but our girls definitely do. And, and so uh, just, uh, again, if, if you have a, a child or a grandchild that wants to get plugged into Awanas, it's almost over. We'll have our gra Awana graduation May 26th, I believe, here at Spring Campus. Uh, it's a Wednesday night, uh, but it picks, kicks back up in August or September. And so just be uh, on the lookout on, on web, our website and Facebook page for more information about Awanas at Believer's Fellowship Spring Campus. Okay, so for this Wednesday's devotional, we're going to be in Proverbs 24. Um, and so kind of, you know, I was watching just to kind of set it up and, and, and set the stage of what we're going to talk about today. Um, you know, I was watching Forrest Gump this this past weekend, and you know, Forrest Gump is one of those movies where it doesn't matter where uh, where it's at in the movie. If if I'm flipping channels and I see it, I'm 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 dedicated. I'm in. I'm all in to watch it. it doesn't matter if it's beginning, middle, or end. You know, I, I'm gonna watch it. It's just a great movie. Uh, <clears throat> but I was watching it, and where I came in, uh, the scene that was going that was showing on TV when I watched it, it was when Forrest and Jenny uh, were walking down that path and they eventually ended up at, at Jenny's childhood home. Uh, and, and, you know, this house's condition is similar to the life that Jenny lived as a young child, but and but was currently living at that time as well. And, you know, this house was not taken care of. I think Forrest Gump said, you know, she lived in a house as old as Alabama, uh, you know, and, and, and this house was just run down and neglected. You know, the paint was chipping, the the board, the, the sideboards were coming apart. You know, the floor was probably coming undone. I mean, it was on cinder blocks. I mean, it's just a tore up house. Well, you know, the this this house was, was the, the neglect for this house it just didn't happen overnight, you know, because neglect that leads to decay and destruction, but it happens over time. It just doesn't happen overnight. Now, with our personal lives, right? And and so with our physical health, if we neglect our physical health, what happens? Problems come up. It's the same the same is true with our spiritual health. If we don't keep an eye on our spiritual health, our health or know what our spiritual health is, if we neglect it, then problems come up. We all know people who were once on fire for God, people who were who were faithful to the church and to the ministry, but somewhere along the way, they got lost. They began to neglect, you know, what the things of God. Now they're just a mere shell of who they once were. Maybe that's you. Maybe your passion and zeal has been replaced with complacency and apathy. You know that that and that's called spiritual neglect. It, it's and it's a it's a problem in the church today, and so we're going to be in Proverbs twenty four verses thirty through thirty four. Uh, before we go any further, though, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just come to you right now, Father. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. I give you this dedicated time to you, Father. 
Father, let us just hear from you, Father. Father, speak to us in a way that only you can, Father. The same way that, that you spoke to Solomon in his dreams, way in his dreams, Father, Father, speak to us, Father, so we can clearly hear you, Father. We thank you for all that you do, Father. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Proverbs 24 uh, and, and verses 30 through 34, and this is God's word. I passed by the fields of the sluggard and by the vineyard of the man lacking sense. And behold, it was completely overgrown with thistles. Its surface was covered with, with nettles and its stone wall was broken down. When I saw, I reflected upon it. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then your poverty will come as a robber and your want like an armed man. Now Solomon passed by a local field and he noticed this vineyard. Solomon takes our attention to the obvious neglect. And he shows us the results of such laziness. If we go to verses 30 and 31, it says, you know, when he passed by this field of the sluggard and by the vineyard of the man lacking sense, and behold, it was completely overgrown with thistles. Its surface was covered with nettles and its stone wall was broken down. The owner had neglected his vineyard. Unless he woke up and tended to it, the situation was, was only going to get worse. See, if we refuse to address the spiritual crisis in our lives, things will get worse. If we honestly appraise where we are spiritually, we, will, we might find out that we've become lazy in the things of God, that, that our spiritual lives are withering away, that our heart is as hard as the fallow ground, that we've become indifferent towards, towards the things of God, that we have left our first love. That means that we're in a spiritual crisis. Now, this field didn't become this way overnight. That wall didn't just suddenly fall down. An extended period of neglect caused all these issues. See, if we find ourselves away from God, chances are things have gone unaddressed for some time. See, we begin to stir away by, by missing church on Sunday, and then we alibi it or we justify it. You know, not for vacation, not because of, of, of things like that, but just because, hey, I'm tired. Or, you know, well, I went to the, the, the church event on Friday night. When we start making excuses to not attend church or not to do things for God, that's when neglect kicks, that's when neglect kicks happens. That's when decay and destruction start coming into our lives. Step by step, we, we walk further and further away from God. The crisis of spiritual neglect begins when we take our eyes off God. When we take our eyes off God, that's when apathy and complacency follow. The result is returning to the things of this world. Spirit, spirit, spiritual negligence is an issue that has ruined many who were once on fire for Christ. Perhaps you noticed problems in the past, but you didn't do anything to address them. Because they weren't addressed, now they've gone worse. They've grown worse. Sadly, many people fail to realize just how severe their situation is. It appears that the owner, in this case, did not care about the pitiful shape of his vineyard. Solomon, now Solomon was the wisest man in the world, right? Whoever lived. But it doesn't take a genius when they walked by to see how dilapidated and how bad, bad a shape the vineyard was. And it was caused that, that way because of neglect. If we as Christians are honest with ourselves, we know when we're backslidden. We know that because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And it's the Holy Spirit that convicts us when we sin. So why is it that so many people fail to address their backslidden condition? It's because their hearts have become so hard that they just don't care. You know, perhaps, you know, somebody has tried to, to hold you accountable, to bring it up, but it's fallen on deaf ears. They've tried to hold you accountable, but the, the fields of your life have become so overgrown and overtaken with weeds and the vineyard of your heart has, has been consumed with your transgression and the walls that protected you, that once protected, protected you, are now broken down. If you are in a spiritual crisis, there is help for you today. But you must first acknowledge that you are in a crisis. And now I realize that not everyone is suffering from spiritual negligence. And for that, I say, praise God. But this sluggard, this lazy person, 
shows us how important it is to stay on guard, to keep ourselves aware so that we don't become spiritually negligent. One way to protect ourselves from spiritual negligence is to know what causes it. Solomon said, he wrote in verse 30, I passed by the field of the slugger. The owner was idle. In fact, Solomon calls him a slugger, which means lazy. Idleness is defined as not working, inactive, not you know, doing nothing, unemployed. If you are not actively serving the Lord, you have become inactive and idle. The only way to become unemployed for God is for you to walk away because we don't retire from God. And we don't we we can only quit him, and that's how we become unemployed. If you become inactive and idle, know this that trouble is coming. There's perhaps no greater example of this than than this idleness, this type of idleness, and the consequences that come from that than King David. We're told that at the time of the kings went forth to battle, David tarried still in at Jerusalem. He sent his captains captains, his servants, his soldiers to war, but he stayed behind. David did not go out looking for trouble. He did not plan to walk away from God. He didn't expect to become consumed with sin, but he, that is exactly what happened. You see, David's problems didn't happen overnight. His idleness was the beginning of the slippery slope that, have, that impacted him for the rest of his life. In this moment of inactivity, when he should have gone to war with his captains, he stayed behind and he looked off the top of the palace and he was tempted by Bathsheba. He asked who she was. He sent for her. He committed adultery with her. And in time, he had her husband killed. Now, his life continued that downward spiral. David was a great man of God. He was handpicked to be the king of Israel. He was a man who walked with God, talked with God, and served him faithfully. God described him as a man of, after his own heart. And from that, he became an adulterous murderer. If we continue to read the story, we find out that David had, had, didn't have fellowship with God for almost a year. His backslidden condition didn't start with temptation. It didn't start with adultery. It didn't start with murder. It didn't start with a hard heart. It began with idleness. It began when David neglected his duty. What about you? Are you actively serving the Lord or have you become idle? Is your prayer life covered with weeds and thistles? Is, is your spiritual sword rusty? Has your, eye, has your area of service gone unattended? Is fruit being produced? Are the walls that you built to protect your character, your marriage, your relationships crumbling and broken down? Let's look, let's look at verse 30b. And, the, and by the vineyard of the man lacking sense. This man was oblivious. He was ignorant to the things that were obvious to anyone who passed his, his estate. Some people are willfully ignorant of their spiritual condition. They refuse to examine themselves. They believe that they are just okay spiritually. And being okay is okay for, with them. They have excuses to justify their neglect. The vineyard owner was ignorant of the consequences of his neglect. And when it came to his duty, he was just indifferent. Let's look at verses 32 and 33. When I saw, I reflected upon it. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. The owner knew what needed to be done. And there once was a time where he had been faithful to the task at hand, where the fields of the vineyards were taken care of because they were precious to him. How do we know that those were precious items to him? Because he built a wall around it. In our marriage, what do we do? We build a wall around, we build boundaries around our marriage so that nothing can come in, so that nothing can attack us. Nothing can destroy what's inside those walls as long as we're aware and alert. But when we, we become indifferent to those things, those boundaries, that's when those walls start crumbling down. And see, many of the people who, were suffer, who are suffering from spiritual neglect were once the most faithful, but they've walked away from their Christian duty. They've walked away from specific ministries in the church. 
They know what the Lord has called them to do, but they refuse to do it. Just as Solomon had a warning for the lazy man then, God has a warning for us today. God tells us that there is a penalty for our spiritual neglect. Let's go to verse 34. Then your poverty will come as a robber and your want like an armed man. The consequences are swift and severe. The end result of this neglect would be great poverty. The consequences of our spiritual neglect will be spiritual poverty. This man's neglect affected several areas of his life. It affected his fields, his vineyard, and his stone walls. Our negligence will affect several areas in our lives as well. The fields were grown, were, were overgrown with thorns and thistles. If a crop had been planted and could grow, they would quickly be choked by the weeds. The owner had not been productive. He had not removed the things that were detrimental that were in the way of things being able to grow. When we neglect our spiritual life, we cannot be productive for the Lord. Jesus said in Luke 10 too, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. One reason why the laborers are few is that, that so many that they should be working in the field are asleep. They're lazy. The vineyard owner probably believed his neglect only impacted himself. But boy, was he wrong. You know, Sophia and I, when we bought our first house, we had it built. And, and one of the things, you know, I didn't realize going through this house building first time is you had to pay for sod. You had to pay for grass, the front yard and the backyard. And so we, you know, we, we paid to have the, the, the yard sodded so that we could have grass for our, for Jordan when he was, you know, he was two or three at the time. And so hours, days, weeks, you know, watering, feeding it, make, you know, manicuring it, just making sure, you know, don't step on my lawn type signs, you know, just so that the grass would grow and it would be green so we could take care of it. But my neighbors, not all my neighbors thought the same way. And so their grass, their sod quickly died off, dried up, and then weeds came. You could definitely, you could tell the dividing line between my house and where my yard stopped and where somebody else's yard started, one of my neighbor's yards started. Because it was green and then brown. And then the, the, the weeds tried to make their way onto my yard. So his laziness, their laziness, didn't just impact them and their house. It impacted my house as well and my yard. It's kind of like this, this vineyard owner. He thought, hey, it's only impacting me. But see, his laziness had a detrimental impact on those around him. You know, his negligence created more work. It creates more work for others. You see, our spiritual neglect will not be contained in our own lives. These seeds, these, these weeds, these seeds will spread and impact others. God has placed you in a position to have an impact on people. He's given you charge to do something. He has given each of us a gift for the kingdom. And we all have a part to play in the kingdom within the church. And we're not doing our part. Something's missing. Your neglect, our neglect will have a negative impact on our family, our friends, our neighbors, and our coworkers. Spurgeon said this, if we are not a blessing to our neighbors by the lives we live, then we are an injury and an, and an evil to them. At some point, this man built a wall to protect the harvest, but he had not, he had been idle for so long that the wall was crumbling. The devoted Christian builds walls. We build walls in our lives. We build boundaries. These walls indicate that, you know, hey, you can't cross this line. These walls also protect us from harm and danger. When we neglect to maintain these walls, we lose sight of the boundaries. Our work is subject to an attack from the enemy and our fruitfulness is at stake. Our Christian character is at stake. Who we are, our testimony is at stake. Are there broken down walls in your life? If so, they are broken down and crumbling because you are asleep spiritually. There is a great danger in spiritual neglect. And there is also a solution for this negligence. See, the owner valued sleep over labor. His only hope of reclaiming his property was to wake up. In the same way, our Christian life is dependent on us being active. 
Because a Christian life is an active life. It's a life of service. It is a life that requires attentiveness, alertness, and labor. Far too many Christians are caught up, caught up with their slumber and they miss God. God is calling for his people, us, to wake up. John Wesley prayed this. My brothers and sisters, the hour has come, has already come for us to wake up from our slumber before the great tri trumpet of the Lord sounds and our land becomes a field of blood. Oh, may we quickly see what leads to peace before it is hidden from our eyes. Restore us, Lord, and put away our displeasure toward us, your displeasure toward us. O oh Lord, look down from heaven and see, watch over this vine and make us recognize the time of our coming to us, of your coming to us. Help us, God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for the name for your name's sake. And then when we and then we will not re oh, turn away from you. Revive us and we will carry on your name. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. That's the prayer we need to make every day. You know, maybe God has revealed to you that you are suffering from spiritual negligence. Now is the time for you to be awake and again, be active in, in God's ministry. Be active in the ministry that God has given you and build those walls, protect your ministry, protect your, your relationships that you have. And be on guard for, for, you know, from our enemy. Amen. Well, amen. I want to thank you again for allowing me to just share my heart. Um, and just, uh, you know, it, it really, um, this really impacted me because, you know, we, we, we sometimes have the tendency to be kind of lethargic, you know, regarding, you know, what we do for Christ and, and we, you know, and, and we don't need to be so flippant about it. You know, our, each area that we serve, that you serve in is an important piece to the, to, to, to God's kingdom. We don't want to minimize that. You never know what kind of impact you could have on a person by just greeting them at the door, shaking their hand, you know, with our salt and our, our sound and light team getting rid of all the distractions, making sure that it's set up so that they can spend dedicated time with God. Our worship team, preparing our hearts to worship God. You know, our, our just every, our children's church, our one is just every area, clothing pantry, food pantry. You know, our, our pray and go teams, our, our lift group leaders, just every part of that has a, plays a part in the kingdom of God. And there's no small ministries everybody's important in, in, in the body of Christ. So thank you. And, and I, you know, I just, I cannot believe that God has put me in this church at this time to be around and surrounded by just God loving people, people that love God and serve God. So just thank you for, for that. Uh, amen. Well, amen. Well, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the reminder, Father, that we are to be alert, Father, that we are to be on guard, Father, that we should not rest and just be lazy in the things that we've done in, in our past accomplishments, Father, but continue to, to mind our, our, our fields, Father, and hold them precious and, 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 and keep our walls up, Father, to protect, Father, our ministries and our testimonies, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you do, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. And so don't uh, a couple of announcements. Don't forget church on Sunday. I want to thank uh, just all those that helped with Mother's Day. I was a huge success. Our photo team, uh, our photo booth teams, thank you for just taking the time to, to do that. I uh, also want to thank uh, a new area of worship or ministry that we're, we're kind of kicking off. That's the scripture reading. Uh, past couple of weeks, we have, we've asked ladies from our ladies ministry to go up on stage and read that, read the scripture reading for church. And we're going to continue that. And so if you're interested in being a part of that, I know I've asked a couple of ladies and, and, and Pastor Tim has asked a couple of ladies as well, but we're really just kind of, we're going to 
give that to the ladies ministry. And, and so if you want to be a part of that, if you want to serve in that capacity, uh, please feel free to reach out to Pastor Tim at the Magnolia campus or me here at the Spring campus or Miss Rebecca uh, at, at the Magnolia campus or Sophia here at the Spring campus. Uh, and, and don't be surprised if, if one of the four of us uh, approach you and ask you to to be a part of that, to read you know, to go up one Sunday and read that scripture. We'll give it to you in advance so that you can practice in front of the mirror and all that, that fun stuff. Uh, so you won't go up, you know, unprepared. We want to make sure that you're prepared. Uh, but it would definitely be a blessing to, to the church and, and, and for them to see and to hear you, uh, you know, share, uh, just read the, the scripture reading for that, for that service. So pray about it, think about it. And if you're interested, reach out to the church. Amen. Amen. God bless and look forward to seeing you on Sunday.